Okay, so next is lowering the opacity. Very simple to do, but a lot of people don't know how. Basically, at the top of your clip, you have this little opacity thing. And if you drag that down, it lowers the opacity of the clip. Most people don't even know it's there, in fact, which kind of surprises me because it's easy to figure out. Now, splitting, moving, and changing time of clips. So, basically, if we have two clips and we want to split them, I use a hotkey, which is S on the keyboard. That makes two different movies. I'll just use Control Z to undo that. If I just undo everything I've done to make it one whole clip again. Okay, so if I want to split this, I choose somewhere with my timeline marker and press S on my keyboard. That way we get two video clips. Now, if we want to basically um, change or speed up and slow down the clip, we want to hold control on our keyboard, and move to the end, and we have this, this little squiggly line marker here. Whoop. Squiggly line marker. And when we then drag in, this whole clip gets sped up. Now, if we watch this, it's really fast. Now, another thing I want to uh, go over. If you were to say I had this little segment of my video that I want to make really long, uh, actually let's choose somewhere where he's shooting. Okay, he's shooting here. Now, if I want to make this longer, if I stretch it out, when I play it, our audio sounds really weird. So what we can do is we can right click on the audio, go to properties, and basically go to lock to stretch. Now if we play this again it doesn't sound as weird and gunshots sound a lot better. Okay, undo all this again. Now composition modes. Um, this is for when you want to add something or change the look of something. So if I right click in the gray area add a video track and let me just find something that I can uh, use as an example. Okay. So let's pretend, uh, actually, let's move this in. Yeah. So basically, if this had a black background, meaning it would look something like this, and I wanted to make the video appear in the black area, so just had our logo, then I would put this composition mode to add, because it then adds it and puts a little transparency layer onto our video, as you can see here. Now if I put this, since this already has an alpha, it's not really the best example, if I put this off alpha, you can see what happens to the black when we put it to add. It takes away all the black in the image, which is what it's going to do to your background. It's going to take away the black. So that was simple enough. Uh, now I'm going to cover something called grouping. Now this is when, let's say, I wanted to have this audio move separately. I don't want it attached to my clip. Uh, basically what I want to do is I want to right click, group, remove from. What this does is it removes it. So not only can I just delete this audio altogether and just have my video, I can basically um, speed up the audio, do anything I want really. They're two separate things now. Uh, now, if you notice, we don't actually have a video preview anymore. Now, this has nothing to do with this, the grouping. It has something, uh, it actually is something I want to cover, and that is a lot of people get annoyed because their video preview screen disappears into another window or, you know, get merged with another window, then they can't find it. What you can easily do is you can go to View, Windows Layouts, Default Layout. Now, obviously, this resets my layout and it inverts it again. So, if we go back into preferences, display, and that, then we get it back. Now, if you've lost something, then that's the quickest and easiest way to get it back. If, uh, okay, I'm going to give you an example. If we merge our video preview screen, which is tiny now, if we merge this into here, right? and then close it and we're like where's our video preview we can go to view 
and then video preview and it pops back up and we can just place it in again so that's simple enough um, I would recommend trying that before you load default layout because it'll change a lot of things uh, in the layout and the way it looks now the last thing I'm going to cover is changing the volume for your render uh, so you know you don't want to get air damage while you're editing I'm going to just set this back to what I usually use obviously you don't want to get air damage when you're rendering so um, basically when it's done if you have the audio really low in Vegas for example here in this audio track if I put this down you can hear let me put this up if I change this it's lower and higher now that's great for adding bullets uh, bullet sounds, everything like that, and equaling everything out. But it's not great when we want to render because we want the master volume to be good for our audio. Now, usually, if you use default or not default, sorry, if you use uh, normal songs produced by artists, usually they're all the s about the same volume. That's a universal setting. So if we just put this to around here and then render it, that'll sound good on YouTube. It won't be too deafening, uh, but it'll still have the option to go that high if you want it to. And that's a, that's a big problem. I see people have really low audio or really high audio all the time. And that kind of annoys me. So that's about it for this. This has probably been a really long tutorial. And I'll probably end up splitting it into two parts. But I hope it's taught you something new. And uh, that's all from me today. You can leave a comment. Subscribe. Please subscribe. This is a new uh, YouTube account. So I'm trying to get it started. Um, and that's all.